Did you hear about how oxygen and magnesium formed an already reduced chemical formula? I was like, OMG. That's right, today we're talking about empirical and molecular formulas. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break hey, this. Yeah. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Chem and Asha. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So, so far in this unit, we've talked about writing chemical formulas, naming compounds, we've done a lot of conversions involving grams, moles, and molecules. Yeah, and in this lesson, we're gonna kind of bring all those ideas together and talk about empirical formulas and how they relate to molecular formulas. So let's get started. Empirical and molecular formulas, a lesson from the formulas and equations unit. Definitions. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio in which the elements combine to form a compound. Think of this as a reduced formula. For example, the chemical compound hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. It reduces by a factor of two to HO. Oh. So HO is the empirical formula of H2O2. A molecular formula is the actual formula of the molecule. It's a multiple of the empirical formula. So if we look at the empirical formula HO, oh. if we multiply by a factor of two, we would get the actual molecular formula of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. All right, ladies and gents, we're gonna do some examples here for you. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna write empirical formulas for the following molecular formulas, okay? So number one here, we've got P2O6. So what we wanna do is look at both those subscripts, the four and the six, I want to see what they're divisible by, what they're commonly divisible by. Okay, so uh, I think they're both divisible by two. Okay, so we're going to divide all subscripts in this formula by two. All right, divide those both by two. So P would be two now, and O would be three. Good, so the empirical formula for P4O6 is P2O3. Right, and I couldn't reduce that anymore. So good, that's a great way to check. If you can't reduce it anymore, you're good. All right. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at number two, C6H12O6. So we have three numbers here. Let's see what all those subscripts are divisible by. Well, these are even numbers too. They're both, are all divisible by two, but they're also all divisible by six. Good, remember an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of those elements in the compound. So we want that number to be the highest of what we're dividing by. Oh, okay, so we would divide by the six. And when I do that, I get CH2O. Perfect. You try number one. Write empirical formulas for the following molecular formulas. Okay, folks, let's continue with some more examples. Are you ready, Fu? I am. All right, we're gonna write possible molecular formulas for the following empirical formulas. So let's look at the first one. We have CH3. So Fu, what do you know about the difference between an empirical formula, which is shown, and a molecular formula, which is what we're trying to find? So the notion said that an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of those elements. So if these are empirical formulas, they must have already been reduced. Good. So to get these molecular formulas, I guess I have to multiply them back by a whole number? Good. In fact, we can pick any whole number because the question just says possible molecular formula. Oh, so okay. we'll let you choose a whole number to multiply the subscripts by. Okay, I think I got this. All right, so CH3, I'm gonna pick three. Sounds good. So multiply it times three. So that means there'd be three carbons. So C3 and three times three is nine. So H3. Nine. Good, and again, it's a possible molecular formula. Maybe it's a real molecule, maybe it's not. It came from the empirical formula, which was already reduced. Okay. Let's do the same thing with number two, C12, H22, O11. All right, I'm just gonna do times two here because these numbers look a little crazy. Sure. And that means C would be 24, hydrogen would be 44, and oxygen would then be 22. Good job. You try number two. Write possible molecular formulas for the following empirical formulas. Now you get to choose whatever whole no numbers you want to multiply by, but for each of these, give at least two possible molecular formulas. Finding the empirical formula from percent composition. Given the percent by mass of each element in a compound, 
assume a 100 gram sample. All percent values can then be written in grams as a result. Convert grams to moles for each element. One thing to be careful about, if you're giving elements like nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, elements that we normally write as diatomics, in this context, we're not gonna write them as diatomics, we're just gonna write the individual element in our mole conversion. You'll then find the mole ratio by dividing all numbers by the lowest mole value of the numbers you just calculated. If needed, multiply to get whole numbers. Now this start step is not always necessary. Some problems are actually done in the previous step. We get whole numbers, we get our empirical formulas. Sometimes though, we get decimal values and we have to multiply at the very end just to get whole numbers for our empirical formula. So that mole ratio, those whole numbers, those become your subscripts for your empirical formula. So now that you have those, simply write the empirical formula. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do an example here. Chu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, ascorbic acid, vitamin C, contains 40.92% carbon, 4.58% hydrogen, and 54.50% oxygen by mass. What is its empirical formula? Now, Shu, a reminder to you and our students watching this, there's a lot of work to do here, so please try to write small. Okay. Let's kind of use our space efficiently here, okay? Okay. All right, so we're gonna start off first by writing out the elements that we have that were given to us in the order, because that's the typical order we'll see them in in the empirical formula. All right, so we got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So Good. we've written those out. All right, so they give us percentages, right? But we need to do these mole conversions. And in order to do mole conversions, we need mass. Right. So do you remember what we have to assume here? Uh, I think we have to assume that it's a 100 gram sample because then all of our percents, which are out of 100, would just be in grams now. Yeah, it makes that conversion a lot easier from the percent to the grams by assuming 100 grams. So let's just change those percent signs to grams for each of those elements. All right, so these are all grams. And I can list those down here, right? That's correct. Okay. Now we see we're leaving a little bit of space here because we know we have to convert these into moles. Good. So now we're going to convert to moles. We need a conversion factor for each one of these. Right. Okay. So going grams to moles, I need the molar mass and it's it's just for elements though. So it's really just the atomic masses off the periodic That's right. table, right? Okay. So carbon is to two decimal places, 12.01 grams. One mole goes on top. And then for hydrogen, so do I, I just do the element hydrogen, right? Yes, so I, remember, this is in a compound, so it's not elemental hydrogen, so we don't take into account diatomics at right, all. Okay. It's just the element, just the atomic. Mass. So then it would just be 1.01 grams with one mole on top. Good, and same thing with oxygen too. So right, being okay. a diatomic normally, this is in a compound, so it's just the atomic mass of oxygen. So 16 grams for that one. Okay, so if we do the math on all of that, what do we get for moles for each one of these? All right, well, I get kind of long numbers. I won't round yet. I get 3.40716, just taking it out a few spots. That's, again, moles of carbon. Uh, for hydrogen, I get 4.53465 moles. And then for oxygen, I get 3.40625 moles. So. Okay. All right, so we found our mole ratio so far in these decimal forms. We want to make it a whole number form. So right. what we're going to do is in those directions and the steps, it said to divide all these numbers by the lowest of the numbers. So which one's the lowest of these three? All right, so we have these three mole values. It looks like oxygen just by a little is the lowest. So I'm oh. going to divide all of them by that number. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm just dividing this by itself. And... This one's pretty close here. All right. Okay, so when we do that, what do we get? All right, so this number when I divide, they're super, super close, so it looks like it's just one. Okay. For hydrogen, it's close to one, but it's a little higher, I get 1.33. Yeah, that's not close enough to round to just one. Yeah, it's, uh, it seems a little bit far away from one, just by a little. And then the last one, of course, is one. So I guess my ratio is one to 1.3 to one. That seems a little strange. Yeah, we're trying to find, it says, what is the empirical formula? And remember, an empirical formula is the lowest 
whole number reduction. So we're gonna have to make this one to 1.33 to one ratio all whole numbers. Okay. So 0.33, that middle one for hydrogen, does that kind of remind you of a fraction, 0.33? Yeah, uh, one third is 0.3333. Right? So if we wanted to change one third into a whole number, what would we multiply one third by? Well, if I had one third and I want a whole number, if I just multiplied by three, right? I, That's right. I get one from that. So, so times we, three would make it whole. Yes, and we want to maintain the ratio of all three of these uh, numbers that we just calculated. So we're not just gonna multiply the 1.33 times three, we're gonna multiply them all by three. Oh, uh, okay. So it'd be like, if I had C1 H1.3301, and I just multiplied all the subscripts by three, I would get, let's see, C3, it's three times 1.33, not just 0.33, so I'd get H4, and then, oh, of course, three so those are whole numbers it looks reduced so this should be the empirical formula it is correct you try number three a compound is composed of 32.8 percent chromium and 67.2 percent chlorine by mass what is its empirical formula remember to follow all the steps for finding an empirical formula show all your work and remember when you get your mole ratios you can round to a whole number if it's very close only keep decimals if it's a noticeable fraction. Finding the molecular formula. Given the empirical formula and the mass of the molecular formula called the molecular mass, find the mass of the empirical formula first, that's called the empirical mass. Now divide the molecular mass by the empirical mass to find the factor by which the two values differ. The molecular mass is going to be larger than the empirical mass. Multiply the factor by the subscripts in the empirical formula to find the molecular formula. Let's do an example of finding a molecular formula. You ready, Fu? I am. Okay. A compound with the empirical formula CH3 is found to have a molecular mass of 30 grams. Find its molecular formula. All right, Fu, let's start with the empirical formula. What is it given in the problem? So the empirical formula is given as CH3. Okay, good. The first thing we want to do after finding the empirical formula is to find the empirical mass. So that would simply be the mass of that empirical formula. So the mass of CH3. Exactly. Okay, so I'm just going to label that so I know what it is. I'm going to call it nth mass. Sounds good. Um, for CH3, so I got C's and H's. I've got one carbon, three H's, multiplied times atomic masses, 12.01. 1.01, Can I just do grams or you? Does it matter what unit here? Uh, I would say we'd prefer grams because the molecular mass Ah, that is makes sense. Grams. All right, so all of these are grams. Okay, so then add them up. Add them up we've got 15.04. Good. Again, that is the mass of the empirical formula. The mass that we're given, though, is the molecular mass. What is that in the problem? Okay, so molecular mass is 30 grams. Good, now remember, the molecular formula is the sort of unreduced actual formula, whereas the empirical is the reduced. So what we're saying right now is the mass of that unreduced formula is 30, and what you just found, the mass of that reduced formula is 15. So okay. we want to find a factor by which they differ, so we're going to divide the molecular mass by the empirical mass. Gotcha. I think I can see the ratio, but I want to show my work here. Sure. So the molecular mass divided by empirical mass, right? Right, yeah. So the 30 grams that they give me here uh, divided by that 15.04 15, uh, 15 grams that they I, find, I found out, um, it's pretty close to two. Can I just leave it as two? Yeah, so we definitely want to look for a whole number in a question like this. Okay. Because our last step is to find the molecular formula, which again is the unreduced formula. So we want to multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by this new factor we just determined, too. Uh, okay, so if the empirical was CH3, and we're going to multiply that times a factor of 2, right? Yep. So that's C2H6. All right, very good. And if we were to check the mass of C2H6, we could confirm that it was 30 grams. You try number four. A compound with a molecular mass of 46.0 grams has an empirical formula of NO2. 
find its molecular formula. Be sure to show all of your work. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on empirical and molecular formulas. Later, nerds! Today's episode is brought to you by... Urinal. Portable, eco-friendly urinal. The world is your bathroom. But we never off, always zone to the brick of dawn. S-C-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.